WWJD, what would Jesus do? Um, and we're thinking today about Jesus' encounter with the, ma- with the woman who was caught breaking the law. Um, so I've got a little icebreaker question for you. What have you done after being told not to? And while you're thinking of this and thinking of something appropriate for an all-age service to share with everybody, I'm going to tell you a little story of what I have done. Um, I came back from camping a little while ago, and I was really tired, really tired. And I just wanted to check my social media. And um, Matt tells me to do, not to do two things. He tells me not to put things on the stairs. Who else is told not to put things on the stairs but enjoys doing it anyway? Yeah, not put things on the stairs and not to look at my devices whilst walking around. Okay, so just, yeah. I was really hungry. I'd made myself some Marmite on toast. Yeah, I put it on the stairs (laughs) so I could run upstairs and go and get my laptop. Put it on the stairs, fine. Went upstairs, got my laptop, lifted it up, couldn't help, little look. Walking down the stairs, looking at my laptop, stood on the Marmite on toast, slipped down, landed somehow as well on the Marmite on toast. (laughs) And the edge of the laptop donked the bridge of my nose and cut the bridge of my nose. I didn't tell Matt for half an hour afterwards because I knew it was the two things that he told me not to do. But I still had the Marmite on my bottom. (laughs) We're going to carry on looking at this story today about the woman caught breaking the law a little bit more. But just to let you know, if you've got a little one, I have got the magic sand at the front of church this morning. You are welcome to come up with your child um, and play with the sand at the front if you would like to. It's absolutely fine. So just to let you know that it is here. If you could take the um, tea towels off and then we can see it. Thank you. Okay, yeah, we all make, this is the magic sand. Come and see, come and have a play. There we are. Okay, I promise not to be too distracted by the magic sand. It's a bit hard, but I try. Um, We all make wrong choices or bad decisions from time to time. But our story today was about a woman who'd been accused of doing something really wrong, of breaking the law And the people were angry. They wanted um, some. They wanted um, something to happen to her about that. They wanted to stone her to death. In fact, she was being condemned for it. Condemned means that she was being sentenced to a punishment for it. And then enters Jesus. And we're looking in these four weeks about what would Jesus do. Perhaps the best way of thinking about this is thinking about what he said he would do and looking at what he did do. He said he had come to free the prisoners. Jesus came to give freedom, not to excuse or explain away bad decisions, not to justify people's wrong actions, but to find a way forward, to forgive and to give hope. So let's zoom in and focus on what Jesus did do when he was faced with this situation, and then think what we would or we should do. So we're going to look at the end of the story after Jesus has said to the crowd, if any of you have never sinned, then go ahead and throw the first stone at her. So it's in John 8, 9 to 11. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest, I think it's really interesting. I only noticed this morning that it begins with the oldest. Until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, Neither do I. Go and sin no more. Jesus chooses not to condemn the woman. He also didn't condone the wrong thing the woman had done either. He didn't accept it. He didn't turn a blind eye. But he offered her hope and a future instead. So we all carry judgments about ourselves or make judgments of others. Maybe we know that someone has done something wrong. 
made some bad choices, and that keeps going around in our head, weighing us down. Perhaps we see that person on Facebook or Instagram who has all the latest stuff and seems to have everything sorted, and we judge them for it. We might see the parent who always seems to be just a little bit cross with the child, flustered and agitated, and perhaps judge on how they're doing. Or we may feel judged like that parent ourselves. Um, Ed talked last month about comparing ourselves to others, and it's well worth a listen if you want to. It's on the website. We can say it's okay that we're not like the people in this story. We've not got the stones. We're not going to throw them at anybody else. But with each thought, it's like we're picking up a stone, either aimed at someone else or aimed at ourselves. And it can really start to weigh us down. I've put a little side note to myself here saying, that paragraph, writing that paragraph was really tough because it's really hard to write about judging people without judging people. That makes sense. And I'm very aware the last few weeks when I've been writing this, I've had to say to a few friends, I'm doing this talk on judgment, but blah, 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 and find myself just slipping into that all the time. So, yeah, just to let you know, it's a super hard thing to think about. But wouldn't it be amazing to have a fresh start, a new beginning, no judgment or condemnation, not holding any onto any stones, either about ourselves or about other people? Wouldn't it be great for someone to see us as we really are? So, well, the amazing news is that Jesus is what Charlie Brown wanted. But Jesus isn't like the new girl because he already knows everything about us. And yet he loves us and sees us as beloved children of God. We can ask God to help us be like that too to those around us. It's especially hard when the person has hurt us. Perhaps we know that they've chosen not to follow good advice or have actively seemed to seek out doing something wrong. So we need God's help in this. In Colossians, it says, You are the people of God. He loved you and chose you for his own. So then you must clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Be tolerant with one another and forgive one another whenever any of you has a complaint against someone else. You must forgive one another just as the Lord has forgiven you. So it says, he loved you and he chose you. We can know that about ourselves, that God loves us and he's chosen us. So then, there's a then, you must clothe yourself. And I wrote, you should put on your superhero cape of kindness, humility, patience, and forgiveness. And then this morning, I realized it's not our superhero cape that we should be putting on. It's our very fancy aprons of kindness, humility, patience, and forgiveness. It's not being a superhero. It's about getting down with people and getting dirty and having all the tools in our pockets. Because if we have a fancy apron, we have pockets. I know. Um, and just being with people, serving them, loving them with humility, gentleness, patience, and forgiveness. And it's something we can choose to do. Um, and these things are also fruit of the Spirit. So when we ask Jesus to be our friend, we can invite the Holy Spirit to be with us. And he helps us to live out all these things. Another thing that can help us is that we also believe that God will, will judge the world. He's the only one who can make the judgment. And by the grace of Jesus, when that day comes, he will see us through the lens of Jesus. And what Jesus did on the cross, putting all our wrong things, all our bad decisions on himself. And then we can know true forgiveness and freedom. And we want that for the people around us too. We're listening in my house at the moment, in my car, to an awful lot of George Ezra. Anyone else George Ezra fans? A few. Okay, fine. And some of his lyrics make no sense at all, but others struck a bit of a chord. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's, 
in Pretty Shining People, he says, it's a terrible time to be alive when you're prone to overthinking and second guessing. And in the video, it's got him with loads of children who are judging every move he makes and they're trying to make him this other person. And it carries on and says, oh, there he is. Don't we all need love? The answer is easy. Don't we all need love? So this might seem like a glib answer. And we're not asking today, what would George Ezra do? Um, I also appreciate in a seven minute talk can only vaguely touch the sub surface of this subject, which is so hard and can sometimes be so deep seated in us. But in a world of judgment, of immediate condemnation online, all around us in our playgrounds, our schools, our workplaces, don't we all need love? And how can we show that love to others? So we're back to where we started. What would Jesus do? We see that Jesus loves, Jesus forgives, and Jesus gives hope. And what would we do? As we leave here this morning, maybe we can choose to walk with God on this. And with his help, decide what to give up what we've been carrying sometimes for so long. George Ezra got it slightly wrong. The answer is not always easy, but it is always love. And so we're going to pray together. And as we're praying today, we're going to pass around some heart stones. Just little ones like this. Can Rachel, sorry, I didn't ask you before. Um, there may hopefully be enough for one each. If not, can, if you can share them or maybe use the stones that were in your bag as well. But this is going to be your stone to take home to help remember this morning. If you can just hold this stone in your hand, close your eyes if you want to because it helps us to concentrate. And we're just going to take some time to pray together. Maybe it's time to say sorry to God for a bad decision we have made or for judgments we've made about other people. Maybe it's time to forgive ourselves, to remove some of the stains we've been carrying about ourselves and to know God's forgiveness. He doesn't condemn. Maybe we need to forgive others Forgiveness is seen as a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment. It is a verb, an action, a doing word. We can choose to start the process of releasing those feelings, of choosing to start to forgive. A wise man I heard yesterday said, anger is quicker and easier, but I choose forgiveness. So let's pray together now. Lord Jesus, we're sorry. We're sorry for when we judge other people, when we pick up those stones. Lord Jesus, we're sorry when we make those judgments about ourselves and we forget that we are loved children of you. Please forgive us. Lord Jesus, help us to forgive other people who have hurt us. Help us to forgive other people who seem to ignore our advice, ignore the things that we see as right. Help us with, yeah, to see them as you see them through the lens of Jesus. Thank you that you forgive us. And thank you that you want us to share that forgiveness with those around us. Help us to start this journey today. Amen.